My videos are for entertainment only. All source materials in my videos are from the public domain and comply with the USA Fair Use and UK Fair Dealing guidelines. Hi everyone, Kelt News here. There's a really interesting article um, in Sky News from Rhiannon, Rhiannon Mills, the one that Prince Harry was just a bit unpleasant to her when he was getting into the car in South Africa. And he sort of dismissed her and told her to stop behaving like this. She's written a very interesting article here. She was travelling to Pakistan with Prince William and Catherine. Well, she gives a really nice account of what happened on the plane. She says she was curled up in her plane seat with her eye mask on, earplugs in, and she heard the giggling. She lifts her mask to see Prince William and Kate standing near her seat, and she says they've come to the back of the plane to say hello to us again and caught most of us fast asleep. And she goes on to say that it was the third time they'd made the effort to come back and chat. And she says, I quote, it may not sound like a big deal, but it doesn't usually happen on royal tours. And if it does, members of the family have never spent that long with us. So the little things are really big things. It's making such a difference. And the other pair, the little things are destroying their reputation and the big things. The self-serving behaviour and the hating the press one minute and then needing them the next. The sympathy cards they keep playing. The victim mentality. So she goes on to say about William and Kate becoming old hands at these high profile visits. And then she says, compare it with the tone of the end of the Prince Harry and Meghan's tour a few weeks ago and you couldn't have a bigger contrast. She then talks about Harry making it all about them by releasing the statement allow, announcing legal action against the Mail on Sunday and all his criticism of the press. She says here, it overshadowed important meetings on their last day with the likes of South Africa's president and some of the great work they had done at the start of the trip. As we head back from Pakistan, you could argue his brother and sister-in-law have shown how it should be done. I think many people would agree with that. She talks about Kate being more at ease on this trip and she's managed to balance doing her royal duties in a way that are authentic and suit her personality with the enormous with the enormous expectations of a worldwide audience who watch her every move. She goes on to talk about how great they were with the children, how relaxed in front of the camera, compares her with Princess Diana saying that she's following in her footsteps, which yes, I think she is. But she's not using Princess Diana's name. And I don't think she's trying to be like her in any way. I think she just naturally is, has a similar heart. Then we go on. And this is the crux of her statement here, which is, as part of the royal family, relationships with other households are just as important. While we were on tour, something peculiar was happening. Buckingham Palace was helping to promote a documentary about Harry and Meghan's Africa tour releasing clips of Harry criticising the press and Meghan saying how tough it had been for her as a new mum. A strange thing to do when you consider that there is an unwritten rule in the royal family that you don't do anything too high profile when other members of the family are on tour. She goes on to say who knows what is going on behind the scenes. Prince William and Kate do, do appear in a good place, a strong team, keen to just get on with the job. So is this being done intentionally? Is the palace giving Meghan and Harry everything they want and in doing so giving them enough rope so that everything that they are doing speaks for itself? And the comparison between the two couples is in everyone's face. I think the palace are allowing the Sussexes to create all these major errors. Another wonderful thing that Prince William and Catherine did was to, well, William actually did it. He personally insisted that the journalists travelling with them, who were also on the flight, would come back with them to the hotel and they were found a bed for the night. His, his main concern was that nobody would be left behind. He said that they were all in it together and he was adamant about that. I think that's absolutely incredible and I think he's going to make an amazing king. You can't help but compare the two brothers, one who's putting other people before himself and the other one who's making everything about himself, it seems. I know one thing, if I was flying with a lot of turbulence, I would love to have Prince William and Catherine on the plane with me. It seems that they were really 
a calming influence on everybody and laughing and joking. And I would be worried if I had young children at home and was, and, and was on a flight that was that bumpy, to put it mildly. Catherine says it was a bumpy flight, but I think it was pretty hair-raising for all of them. So a lovely story about them and what a lovely way to finish their tour, you know? That's all I'm saying. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.